Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are talking about horsepower, arguably one of the most important units when talking about cars. So we're going to be focusing on three questions in this video. First of all, what is horsepower? Second of all, why does a car that's sold in America and sold in Europe have a different horsepower rating in each country when it's the exact same car? And then our third question is, why is all of this nonsense here on the whiteboard pointless and what unit should we be using? So we're going to get through that starting with what is horsepower. And horsepower is a unit of power. Well, what is power? Well, power is work over time. Now that sounds useless and confusing. So what is work over time? Well, work is force times distance. So if you have a car, it takes a certain force to push this car a certain distance. That's work. Now, how quickly you move it from here to here, that is power. So power is simply force times distance divided by time. Now we want to know what is the unit horsepower. And so this is a unit developed by James Watt. Now James Watt is known for his steam engine and so his steam engine was often replacing horses which were doing the work and so he wanted to be able to communicate okay what can my engine do how many horses can my engine replace and so he needed to come up with a unit in order to make that comparison that unit being horsepower and so there are many different stories out there and derivations of how this came to be how this unit came to be um, and many of them are not cited I found a journal American Journal of Physics entry in 1936 that detailed how he came up with this um, and looked at his actual notes and so that's what we're going to be using as the basis for how he derived this unit and in this article they talk about a horse rotating a mill and it has a 12 foot radius from the center so that horse presses a force to rotate this arm right here and then you have a grinding mill in the center and so it goes around and around and around in circles and so it has a certain force that it's applying it has a certain distance that it travels and then it travels that distance in a certain amount of time so we have all of the things we need in order to figure out what is power and so James Watt says that the horse pulls with that force of 180 pounds of force uh, and an interesting thing from this article what it said about how he derived this unit nothing is said about how he arrived at the 180 pound pull exerted by a horse and so that's kind of the unfortunate thing is like we're using this unit I mean he probably didn't know when he made this unit that we would be using it uh, today and it would be so meaningful and he just kind of you know this is back of the napkin math obviously the guy was very smart uh, but I don't think he had the foresight to see how much how often this unit would be used uh, and it's kind of very nonchalant how we arrived at it so we don't know where 180 pounds of force comes from but that's what the horse is pulling and it's at a radius of 12 feet and so we can calculate the distance that it travels 2 pi r uh, and it is able to travel around 2.5 times 2.5 circles per minute so this is what his uh, James Watts notes showed and so we can do the math here to figure out how much horsepower is that so power is equal to the force that's our 180 multiplied by our distance so that is going to be 2 pi times our radius which is 12 times and then 2.5 times per minute so multiply by 2.5 times per minute and so we can multiply all of that out and that gives us 33,929 foot-pound force per minute now he did a bit simpler than this again back the napkin math that he's kind of going off of and he just said well 2.5 times per minute at this radius that's about 60 yards per minute so that equals 180 pound force multiplied by 180 feet per minute and he arrived at 32,400 foot-pound force per minute now later in his writings he starts to write this as 33,000 foot-pounds force per minute maybe he's just rounding up we don't exactly know but that's what he starts going with and again this is like it's crazy that this is the unit we're using today and this is how we got to it uh, but this is the unit today so one horsepower today is equal to 33,000 foot-pounds of force per minute or 550 we can simply divide that by 60 550 foot-pound force 
per second. Okay, so just looking at these numbers and these units, it probably doesn't mean anything to you directly. So what do these numbers actually mean? Well, if you were to have a horse and it's got this pulley system, so it's got a rope going across this pulley and it has 550 pounds hanging from it, this horse would be able to lift this 550 pound weight one foot in one second. So that's 550 pounds of force up one foot in one second. So that's what that one horse is doing. So if you had a car engine that was then strapped to this same system, well, it would be able to either take that 550 pounds of force, say it has a 200 horsepower car engine that is doing the work here, well, it could lift that 550 pounds 200 feet in one second instead of just one foot, or it could do a lot more weight. Multiply the weight by 200, 110,000 pounds uh, lift that one foot in one second. So you can see that, you know, you multiply the horsepower by 200, you can do significantly more work uh, in the same amount of time. Now, how does this actually apply to cars? Well, ultimately it's coming down to, you know, when a car is driving, it has certain resistive forces, aerodynamics, uh, inertia by accelerating, uh, rolling resistance and internal friction within the bearings and the drivetrain of that vehicle. And so it's trying to accelerate against that and that's what it needs power for. So power ultimately allows the vehicle to put down a force at the wheels and accelerate. So it's determining its top speed, its acceleration, its rate of work. In other words, how fast can that car move from one spot to another? The more horsepower it has to keep everything else equal, then the faster it can move from that spot to another spot. Okay, so what is metric horsepower? And you may see this written as PS, CV, CH, other uh, abbreviations. So all of these are simply abbreviations for the words horse and power in different languages, PS being German, CV being Italian, CH being French, and so on. There's many different ones out there, but they all represent metric horsepower. And so if in SAE units, we are looking at foot pounds force per second, then in metric, instead of feet, we have meters, and instead of pounds force, we have kilograms force. So in metric, we are looking at kilogram force times meters per second. So one horsepower, which we just figured out, is equal to 550 foot pounds force per second, whereas one metric horsepower is equal to 75 kilogram force per meter, meter per second squared. And these are fairly close. Uh, one of the interesting things we need to look at here though, is that we have a unit of force. And so a pound force, force is equal to mass times acceleration. So a pound force is equal to a pound of mass multiplied by gravity. Uh, a kilogram force is equal to a kilogram multiplied by gravity. And so for example, with our 550 foot pound force per second, if we multiply that by gravity here to write it all out in complete units, so we have 550 multiplied by one, multiplied by 32.2 feet per second squared, uh, that's gravity's pull in SAE units, then we get a number of 17,694 pound feet per second, uh, pound feet squared per second cubed. Now I know looking at this, it's like, what is all this? It's meaningless and it truly is. It's truly just meaningless. So let's just power through and we'll get to some very interesting conclusions. So if we were to convert this to metric, we would get 745.6 kilogram meters squared per second cubed. Now, one uh, metric horsepower we know is 75 uh, kilogram force meter per second. So we're multiplying that by gravity, 9.807, and we get 735.5. And as you'll notice, these two numbers are not exactly the same thing. In fact, one metric horsepower is equal to 98.6. If you take this number and divide it by this number, 0.986, 98.6% of one uh, American horsepower. So that is why you will see cars have a different horsepower rating in Europe versus in the US. So for example, a Ferrari 812 Superfast. Its name actually gives some hints about it. So the eight standing for 800 CV uh, and the 12 standing for a V12, but that 800 CV or metric horsepower is equivalent to just 789 horsepower, which is what you'll see it rated as in the United States. Same engine, same horsepower, just the different unit being used. McLaren 600 LT, the 600 standing for 600 metric horsepower, uh, but in the US, 
that is 592 horsepower. So again, same car, but using different units when discussing horsepower. So finally, we get to our question, why is all of this nonsense and what units should we actually be using? So what if, or should I say, what if, oh boy, oh boy, okay. So what if there was a unit that equaled one kilogram meter squared per second cubed instead of this 745.6 which doesn't make any sense 17694 pound feet squared per second cubed which makes no sense 735.5 kilogram meter squared uh, per second cubed which is the metric horsepower again doesn't make any sense what if there was a unit that just equaled one you know wouldn't that be great and there is the watt so that's the fantastic thing named after james watt and you can't fault him this unit came about after his time named after him and so one watt is one kilogram meter squared per second cubed or you could use a kilowatt a thousand watts and that is equal to a thousand kilogram meter squared per second cubed so these units make a ton of sense you can derive them and you have you know these base units that all line up in these beautiful neat one 1000 numbers rather than this nonsense 17,000 735.5 none of that makes any sense so why use it when you could use the what and then people will say well I'm not familiar with talking about cars in terms of kilowatts uh, but but yes you are you know when you look at a light bulb this is a 10 watt bulb you've heard that before this is a, a 45 watt bulb you've heard that before so when we talk about TVs computers vacuum cleaners microwaves we talk about electronics all the time we talk in terms of watt which is a unit of power and it's a unit that makes plenty of sense uh, versus this back of the napkin math which was used to derive one horsepower doesn't even actually represent one horsepower a horse could have more than one horsepower uh, so it's silly to use this uh, and this is just such a logical unit to use and thankfully some electric cars we are starting to actually talk in terms of kilowatts which is fantastic so thank you all so much for watching and if you have any questions or comments of course feel free to leave them below and I'm going to keep talking in horsepower because you know what? This is America and that's what we do here. We just make it difficult and we use the units that don't make any sense. Why not?